Hello. Welcome to the lobby of the Borland Mansky Center on the campus of Concordia University, Irvine. This is a place where a lot of music takes place. Actually, in the last six months, it's been very silent due to the pandemic. We would love to invite you in here in person to hear our musicians play. But at this time, we have to settle for recorded musical content. But it's excellent. And in the great mission of Concordia University, we'd like to offer to you today a very special recital of sacred music, featuring a number of our student soloists and several devotions, including one by one of our beloved university founders, Dr. Moon. Please join us today in a, in a sacred time and enjoy this wonderful music. Thank you.
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the year 1945, the Second World War was ended, and Korea was liberated from Japanese rule. That was the cause for great jubilation and celebration. However, Korea was divided into North and the South Korea. That gave great apprehension and the fear of the future of our nation. In the year 1950, only five years thereafter, North Korea indeed invaded South, taking over the capital of South Korea, Seoul, uh, in three days, and a great chaos ensued. Many refugees began to pour in and pour out. And in those chaotic days that I myself was reduced to literally an orphan. By that time, my father passed away. My mother was arrested and captured because of my father's position in the government. And I myself, people told me that I should uh, escape from communist held territory because if they find me, that they will uh, draft me into a Red Army. And so my plan to escape led me to a mountainside and the valleys and one night when I arrived, it was beginning to get dark. I remember what to do. I didn't have any idea. However, I have to stop and stay overnight. Snow was deep on the ground and uh, I shoved the snow slightly aside under the tree and lay down to sleep with a blanket wrapped around me. It seems so cold and the air was just uh, biting and that pain was excessive. But the worse than the cold air and the snow was the sense of loneliness, a feeling forsaken by the world. As I lay under the tree looking up the sky looking at the Milky Ways and other stars, they made me even more lonesome. How I wished there was even uh, some person that I can talk and uh, express our mutual concerns. And how I wished that that would be true, but nothing came but the silence. As I tried very hard to wish, all of a sudden, a word popped into my ear. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the ages. Where did I hear that? How, where did that come from? Well, it was one of my uh, classmates who was a Christian because of which he was often ridiculed. He invited me to come to his church to watch the movie called the King, the King of the Kings. At that time, the pastor ended with a devotion based on Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, the last verse. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. If he is the is available to us and is on our could, could be our side even at the end of the age and end of the world then certainly he could be here too and with that wishful thinking i tried to convince myself that i'm not alone i fell asleep and i awoke next morning wondering why i was not frozen to death it was indeed a miracle and so it seems that all the fears dissipate when you call upon the Lord to be on your side. 
What is the lesson that I learned from this? When the life on earth is precarious, fear takes over our life. When the Lord is at your side, you move from fear to faith. And that, indeed, is the theme of this brief devotion. Listen to the word of the text once again. Isaiah 41, verse 10. So, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be disturbed, dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen.
Faith over fear. What do you think of? When you hear faith over fear, if you're like me, I go to the Bible story of David. David and Goliath, when he has a slingshot and he slings it, it hits Goliath. Knocks him down. Reigns victorious. That's faith over fear. What do you think of? Faith over fear. When you hear that word fear, where does your mind go? What do you think? If you're anything like me, there's some more real fears inside my heart that I tend to think about, uh, such as the fear of being inadequate, the fear of not being enough, fear of not being good enough. Whether that be in your career or in my career or, or my future or my relationships with others, I fear all the time as a musician that I am not good enough. And I have the fear of inadequacy. Perhaps today you struggle with the fear of addiction or temptation and there's something that's holding on to your heart that isn't of Jesus Christ, something that's weighing you down and you're so fearful that you can't get rid of it. It's going to mess up your relationship with the Lord. It's going to mess up the relationship you have with others and you can't get over this temptation or addiction or affliction and you're fearful. Or perhaps today you find yourself in the scariest of situations and you're dealing with the fear of loss, whether that be someone that is close to uh, joining their Heavenly Father at home or, or even just the fear in general of losing a loved one, or perhaps you've lost a loved one. It's a very real fear. Especially in a world where we walk around now and there is fear everywhere. We wear masks to protect us from the fear of getting sick. We, we guard what we say and what we think, the opinions we have and the opinions we don't have. And we guard what we say because we're afraid to, 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 to divide or, or to hurt anyone or offend anyone. In this world that is so divisive, so chaotic, so painful, so hurtful, there's a lot of fear. So how can I say have faith over fear? Well, I think faith over fear is an easy answer when things are far away. When things are far from us, it's easy to say have faith, that God's got it. But as soon as things get personal, as soon as things get real, the question changes to, to does God have it? And, and the question is now is, does he have it? Does God have things under control? Am I safe? Am I able to say that I have faith over fear? When things get real. Faith gets confusing. I'm reminded of the story of Radshak, Meshach, and Abednego, three faithful Jewish uh, men who, who, under the command to bow down to King Nebuchadnezzar, said no. And because of that, they were about to be placed in the fiery furnace. King Nebuchadnezzar calls him in and says, I'm going to turn up the furnace, and, and you still don't want to bow down to me. Do you feel how hot it is? I mean, look, the, the hair on your arms are burning off. And they look back at him, and they say, I have faith that my God will save us. But what they say next in verse 18 of chapter 3 of Daniel is, I think, the most important thing to notice when it comes to faith. For they look at King Nebuchadnezzar and they say, but even if he doesn't save us, I will still not bow down to your idols. You see, so often we have our faith, our own faith as a measuring stick of where we're at with Christ or a measuring stick of where we're at in life. And I think we miss it. We miss the fact that having faith is giving total control of our reason, of our logic, of our understanding, and giving it to God, saying, whether things are good or bad, whether I have health, whether I have life, whether I have death, it doesn't matter because, God, I trust you, and I have faith over fear. It's a lot easier said than done. See, I think as Christians, sometimes our biggest fear is really saying that we don't have it together that we are scared, that we're in need of Jesus. Well, later on in the story, uh, they get thrown into the furnace, and they don't burn. God saves them. But God also puts himself as a pre-incarnate Christ, and Christ enters into that furnace with them, and, and he is seen by King Nebuchadnezzar and the other jailers, and, 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 and Jesus is seen in the midst of the fire. And, and the great news that I have to deliver to you today is that when we have fears, when we have doubts, we have a God that when we put our faith in him, isn't afraid to get down and dirty in the mess of things, in the mess of our life, in the fiery furnace of our life, in the fiery furnace of the fears that we have in this life, 
we have a God willing to step in and say, you don't have to have it together. Because when you are thrown into the fiery furnace, when things are all but lost, I stand here in the work and the presence of what I've done for you, and you are redeemed, you are marked as saved, you are one who is right with God because of it. So whatever is thrown at you at this life, have faith that you are protected, that you are loved, that you are redeemed. To close, Jesus tells uh, another story in Matthew 18, and, and he's asked, you know, people ask him, how do we get into the kingdom of heaven? And he looks around and he finds children, and he says, unless you have faith like this, faith like a child, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And why does he say this? You see, Jesus understands that to have faith is to be in complete need, complete uh, giving up control of. And so Jesus tells us to have faith like a child, to not think about it, because your Father's got it under control. So whether you feel inadequate, whether you feel uh, the fear of uh, addiction and temptation, whether you are fearful of losing your life or the lives of others, I can say to you confidently, have faith. Because regardless of what you and I go through or do or work for or know in this life, we have a God who's not afraid to get in the mess and step in your place and say, I've got it. So friends, it's my joy to you to say, have faith over fear.
Hello, my name is Emmeline Doyle and I'm a freshman this year at Concordia University, Irvine. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to attend this university. The community is so welcoming, my classes are amazing, and most importantly, my faith in Jesus is nurtured. I would like to extend a thank you to all the parents, families, and individuals that support our CUI community. We hope you enjoy this sacred music concert. My name is Lauren Cruz. I am a senior here at Concordia University, Irvine. And looking back at my past four years, I am so incredibly grateful for the opportunities that I've had with people that I now get to call my friends, for the professors who have pushed me to grow in my studies. And I'm so thankful for a God who shows us his love in different ways each and every day. I hope you really enjoyed the Sacred Music Concert and that you have a blessed rest of your week. Thank you. Hello, my name is Gretchen Sheets Kirby and I am an adjunct faculty member here at Concordia University, Irvine, as well as an alumnus. It is an incredible privilege for me to now teach some of the music classes that I used to take as a student here. My collegiate years were enriching in so many ways. I was challenged to question my faith and my values in the world around me in ways that were hopeful and in a nurturing environment. As a music student, I was provided with numerous opportunities to perform and to get to grow as an artist. It is now such a joy to work with the students here and watch them grow in their own various ways. I hope that you enjoyed the Sacred Music Concert today.